Welcome back everyone for lecture 11 part 2 where we're going to talk about reading a P and a TXY diagram. Now as I showed you briefly in part 1 I showed you a representative PXY diagram. Here I'm going to, I'm going to start off with a, a TXY diagram because I think that's a little bit easier to understand what's going on where on the y-axis I've got temperature on the x-axis I've got your mole fraction so either XA or YA and as a reminder your X represents the, the mole fraction of the liquid phase, your Y represents the mole fraction of the vapor phase. And in this case, where you have, uh, or in this case, what, what happened is that the diagram is gonna represent regions where you have liquid, regions where you have vapor, and then regions where you're gonna have a liquid vapor mixture. Now, as you, as you would guess, if you have low temperatures, and you had to choose between a liquid and a vapor, you're going to have a liquid, which is what we have here. So. The, I'm using blue to denote liquid and red to denote, as you guessed it, vapor. So again, as at low temperatures, you would have a liquid phase, and at high temperatures, you would have a vapor phase. And in, in, as you see, that intermediate region between your blue curve and your red curve, that's where you would have your liquid, liquid and vapor mixture. And you, there's some information that you can gain by using a T or a PXY diagram, such as how much liquid and vapor you have, what are the compositions of the liquid and vapor, and that's what we're going to talk about, we're, and that's what we're going to use these rules coming up to help us with determining. Now, this is a TXY diagram, and similarly, we can have a PXY diagram, where instead of T on the y-axis, we have P on the y-axis. And our, our phases are flipped, so now you have liquid uh, on the top and vapor on the bottom, and that's again because at low pressures, we're going to have a vapor, and as you continuously increase that pressure, eventually you're, you're going to have a liquid. And again, that intermediate region between your, your two curves is going to be your liquid vapor region. And as, a, as another reminder in connecting what we talked about in part one, that straight line is your bubble point line. So that indicates that whatever composition you have, the temperature with the that's gonna indicate the, the pressure at which you're going to form your first bubble. And similarly, with that red curve, that's your dew point curve. So that's gonna indicate when you're gonna form your first liquid droplet. And so we're gonna now go through a couple of the rules for reading these diagrams. So rule number one is, a, is the one, two, one rule. So along any isotherm or isobar, and an isotherm, isobar is just when you draw a line across at the same temperature or the same pressure. So we have one in this case. And just so you know, we're just gonna use as an example, benz a benzene toluene system. So in this system, I can draw a line all the way across. I can draw my isotherm. And the region must alternate between being a single and a two phase region. So in this case, we're going, if we start from left and go right, we're gonna start with one phase, the vapor phase. We'll go to two phases, liquid and vapor, back down to one phase, which is just liquid. Okay, so one, two, one. Now, rule number two is the lever rule. So in this case, let's say I have a, a, uh, a mixture that has a, a mixture that's of mixture A. And in this case, it has a composition of 30 mole percent of toluene and that's all I know I just know it's 30 percent toluene what we're going to now do is the lever rule where we're going to figure out the composition of each phase and so the composition of each phase can be found by drawing an isotherm segment to each boundary so I'm going to draw an isotherm and now at the bounds where that isotherm intersects with your vapor and your liquid curves that's where we're going to start gaining some additional information because now, those uh, now at the end of those curves, that's where we can get the composition of our vapor and the liquid. So if I look at the, the point where my isotherm intersects with my vapor curve, that's point B. And when my liquid curve intersects with my isotherm, that's point C. And so now if I just draw a line down to figure out what my molar compositions are, I would see that B has a mole fraction of 0.23 of toluene in the vapor phase, and at part, uh, point C, I have 40 mole percent toluene in the liquid phase. And 
the mixture, the overall mixture of A and B of, of toluene and benzene is 30 mole percent. And just to visually show what, what that means, I've got this next slide where I'm going to show that, where I will show that. So in this case, at point A, all I know is that I have 30% toluene and 70% benzene. That's all I know. And I knew that because if I drew a line all the way down to the molar compositions, I knew I had 30 mole percent toluene. But that's it. That's all I know. Now, because I drew a t an isotherm all the way across, I did see that the point B was where my isotherm intersected with my vapor curve. And so for point B, I know that anything in the vapor phase has 23 has a mole fraction of 0.23 for toluene and a mole fraction of 0.77 for benzene at point B. So any vapor, it's going to have that. It's going to be that composition. And if we go and do the same thing for point C, which is where we had a liquid, if we look at the liquid phase, we will know that we have 43 a mole fraction of 0.43 for toluene and a mole fraction of 0.57 for benzene. So I now know the compositions of my liquid and vapor state. And so the, la the last rule is the lever rule, where the lever rule is going to figure help me figure out how much I have of each of my phases. How much liquid do I have and how much vapor do I have? So for any two-phase region, the rel relative amount of each phase can be found by dividing the opposite segment by the total line. So in this case, I have this line BAC. And what that means is that if I draw a, a line from points A to C, that's going to represent, so C, since C intersects with the liquid part, that means that I'm going to now, that's going to correlate opposite to of the liquid. So that should represent the amount of vapor I have. And when I go from B, B to A, that line should represent the amount of liquid I have when I divide by line BC. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna try that out and we're gonna figure out how much liquid and, and vapor we have right now. So for our mole percent liquid, it's gonna equal BA, line B, going from point B to A, divided by BC, the line going from B to C, right? And because that's opposite of the liquid line. So in this case, our, our line BA is going to be 0.3 minus 0.23 divided by 0.43 minus 0.23 for line BC. Now, if we multiply that by 100, we would see that we have 35% liquid. And if we do it for vapor, if we now do the same idea for vapor, we do mole percent vapor, it's going to equal AC divided by BC. So now it'll be 0.43 minus 0.3 divided by 0.43 minus 0.23 giving us 65%. And that, that should make sense because if you look at point A and you had to guess, is A more vapor or more liquid? Since A is closer to the vapor, the vapor curve, that indicates that A is definitely a lot, should have a lot more vapor than liquid because it is much closer to vapor. And theoretically, let's say if A got all the way to the vapor point on the curve, obviously that's 100% vapor. Right, and that, and that makes sense then that AC should represent the, the vapor phase because that would give us a higher percentage of vapor. And again, just to recap, we've just discussed the rules for reading those T and PXY diagrams. And that's going to wrap up lecture 11. Stay tuned for lecture 12.